Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. I welcome each and every one of us once again to this great program. And I believe God has something in stock for each and every one of us. The name of the Lord be praised forevermore. Today is the fifth day of our prayer. The prophetic fast and prayer for the tenth month. And I want to congratulate everyone that has been on this fast. It is the last prescribed prophetic fast of the year 2021. We had the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, and the fast of the seventh month. And now we are on the tenth month. And the Bible says the end of every matter is better than the beginning thereof. I pray for every one of you that uh, whatever this fast hold, like we are told categorically that it shall make the house of Judah to experience joy gladness and a cheerful feast. A cheerful feast can be called testimony. Testimony bring cheers and a feast at the same time. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will not end this year with your hand on your head as a symbol of defeat. I pray for you that whatever has been a blessing, whatever you have been thanking God, whatever has been progressively signaling an addition and increase, it will not turn to sorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that you will end well. Amen. You will end well. Amen. <laughs> you will end this year well. Amen. It shall be years of years for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's keep praying. Let's keep thanking. Amen. Let's keep our faith on. Amen. Let us not cast away our confidence. God can come from any direction. Yes, yes, yes. He can come from behind. Mm. He can come from the front. Mm. It can come from the middle. Amen. So it doesn't matter where you may think you are in the program of the year. All I pray for you is that God should come through for me and you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God should come true for me and you. That is, what, that is what is most important. God should come true for you and me. And I see him doing so in the name of Jesus Christ. I see him doing so. He will come true for you in Jesus' precious name. Uh, today I will be rounding up on the subject that we have been looking into the forces that power life. Life is not answerable to force. You don't force life. When I mean force it, that is you don't uh, humanly use your energy to make life to come true for you. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse number 6. It says, it is not by power, it is not by might, but by my spirit, say the law unto Zerubbabel. And what he said to one is what he said to all. It's not by power, it's not by might, but by the spirit of God. So life is resting and operating on the forces of the spirit. 
And we began to examine those forces, the force of knowledge, the force of revelation, the force of enthusiasm. We look at the force of prayer, and now we are looking at the force of gratitude or thanksgiving. These are some of the forces that drive life through. These are the gears, spiritual gear you engage and you find acceleration in lifting and promotion. Praise God. I said, praise God. So that is how it works. And you know, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So keep on acquiring knowledge. It will power your life. Keep on seeking for revelation. Until things are revealed to you, it is not yours. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29. Keep on rejoicing and be full of enthusiasm. Let nothing depresses you. Issues are common to life, but they will all pass and you will go through. So keep your joy. When your joy stop, your life stop. When your joy stop, your productivity stop. And then we look at the force of prayer. Prayer is believer platform to turn things around. It is believers platform to bring God to the scene and engage God with what is engaging you. And you know he has never lost any battle. And now we are now look at the force of gratitude. And so much has been said. But today, as we round up on these forces that power life, I want to let you see two things that are very important about life. And like we are told, Thanksgiving is the password that unlock everything that belongs to God, including life. We'll be looking at two things that is very crucial in life. If these two things are absent in the life of a man, that man is doomed. And that is preserve, uh, promotion and preservation. Promotion and preservation. Lifting and preservation. The Bible says, whatever the Lord does shall abide forever. And the Bible also made us clear that the blessing of the law added no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord is rich and added no sorrow. Praise God. So whatever God has done in your life and my life is a step of promotion, is adding value to our life. And that value needs to be preserved. That value needs to be preserved. Proverb 10, 22. That value needs to be preserved. Many in life keep on repeating stages of life. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and added no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and added no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and added no sorrow. Now, when you look at one scripture, you will discover that many people they make a step forward and they make two backward and that is the reason it look like they are not making progress because for every two step they make forward they make three or five backward 
It's like the army marching left, right, left, right, left, right. You can see activity, but there's no commensurable progress. They are on the same spot, yet they are sweating. I pray for someone here who have been laboring, but you cannot see any evidence of progress in your life. I speak into your life now that that season has come to an end. You will make notable progress from now onward. In the name of Jesus Christ. As Moses came through for the tribe of Reuben, I come through by the anointing of the Holy Ghost for you. Because of the consequence of the, of the action of Reuben, his father said he will not excel. But Moses came through and said, Reuben shall live and not be few. But he shall live no matter what. I speak into your life because a prisoner may not be able to obey prisoner. I come true for you by the anointing of the Holy Ghost this hour and I declare that you will life will no longer be a life that is marking time. You will truly ascend to your throne and the throne shall be sustained by the finger of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. In Proverbs chapter 12, and verse 26. He said the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. But the ways of the wicked seduces them. The ways of the wicked seduces them. What does it mean? Let me read a message for you. Say, a good person survives misfortune, but wicked life invites disaster. Now, look at verse 27. He said, the slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. Mm. When you look at this word, you will see the place of preservation. Hunting is one of the most difficult exercises in life. When, you, uh, when I was a kid, we used to go for hunting. And when you set out, you have good intention that you will get some bush, in Nigeria we call it bush meat. You will get some wild rabbit, different kind of animal that are edible. You will get it back home and at least in the evening, you can have something on your table. But as good as your intention is, the reverse may be the case. Because you cannot predict what animal you will meet. You are going for cheetah. You may find lion. So the hunter becomes the hunted. You may be going just for ordinary rat. I've seen that happening. We will find a big snake. I remember one day I set a trap and when I came back on top of the trap was like a python, big snake. He can, he, the, the trap cannot kill the snake. The snake is still alive. And that is how life is. But the Bible said the slothful, even when he get the animal, he will not roast it. And you know, roasting is one of the is one of the ways of preservation. 
It's a preservation method. Ancient preservation method. Even to today. If there's no power in your house, don't cry. Grill all the chicken. And then you have preserved them. But the Bible said the slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. We are amassing wealth. We are getting breakthrough. We are getting new jobs. We are building houses. But are we preserving them? You see, when you go for hunting and you don't preserve what you have caught in hunting, the next stage is the stage of decomposition. Many blessings have turned to sorrow. But the Bible says, whatever the Lord doeth is forever, and the blessing of God make it rich and added no sorrow. Some people have gotten a job, and the job have led to death. Some people have gotten money, and that money have wrecked the marriage. There must be a way of preservation. There must be a way of moving to the next stage of your blessing, and this blessing is preserved. You can't be starting all over. And that is what the force of gratitude bring on board. It helps your blessing not to decompose. You know, if you caught an animal in the farm, uh, in the forest, and you brought it home, and you don't roast it, and it gets decomposed, the whole place will be smelling. Then you have to get into labor of throwing away the decomposed animal, and at the same time, the odor, the bad smell, that is labor and futility. I pray from today, you won't earn salary and you are taking it for, for medication anymore. Amen. Swallowing things that are bitter, but you have to take it because of the affliction. That will not be your portion anymore. You won't educate children and they will come out and become drug addicts. The children God has given you will no longer give you tears. In the name of Jesus Christ, every time you look at your children from today, you, this woman that I'm talking to right now, there's going to be a reverse of your past experience. Those children shall be like the olive, olive tree, well blessed of the Lord. I prophesy over their life that they will no longer give you heartache. They will no longer be the dullest in the class. They will bring you joy in the name of Jesus Christ. So the blessing of God for it to remain a blessing and be rich, that is advancing promotion and never be a sorrow, it has to be preserved. But it takes spiritual diligence and gratitude. It takes, I mean, spiritual diligence in gratitude. It is thanksgiving that preserve God's blessing. It is thanksgiving that elevates the blessing of God to another level. And I will quickly read within the time we have uh, two scriptures for us so that we can learn. In Malachi chapter number 2, Malachi chapter number 2, I will read from verse 1. He said, And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, that is to thank me, said the Lord of hosts. You know, it's, it's the Lord of hosts that says, not by power, it's not by mind. It's now showing you what it takes to power your life from one level of blessing to another. 
He said, I will even send a cause upon you. I will cause your blessing. Yea, I have caused them already because you do not lay it to heart. And look at what he says here. And now this is the indictment, ye priests. If you refuse to obediently listen, if you refuse to honor me, God of the angels' armies, I'm reading from Message Bible, in worship, then I will put you under a curse. I will exchange all your blessing for curses. In fact, the curses are already at work. The causes are already at work. It's not that God is going to pronounce a cause as it were, but he will withdraw his presence. And when God is absent, all you have is chaos and concern. Thanksgiving preserve blessing. Thanksgiving preserve blessing. Every time you thank God, your blessings are preserved. It is the spiritual chemical for preservation of God's blessing. The moment you give thanks, you have seen that blessing, which is spiritual chemical, that forbid it. It's like refrigerating a fruit. It becomes difficult to spoil. Because the moment God takes glory from something from you, he makes sure that thing do not only really remain a continuous blessing, it makes it also to advance. I believe God with you today that from now onward, you will not take God's blessing for granted anymore. As you receive them, you seal it up with depth of joy and gratitude for the purpose of divine preservation and elevation. For the purpose of divine, you know, when you give thanks, that channel is automatically configured to continue to bring you blessing. And I will give you an example. It happened to you and I. When I bless somebody with something, out of what I have. And the person said, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And show gratitude. You know what he has done? He has not blocked the flow of future blessing. He has opened it up. And I'm sure it does happen to you that you give some people uh, a blessing and they say, thank you. You know, when you have the next one, their name comes to your mind. And the one that does not thank no matter how much of such level of blessing you have, their name disappears from your memory because their way never pleases you. Please, no matter how little things anybody has given you, open that channel up by showing gratitude to the fellow. It's not just to God. Just like we love God and we love people, by showing our love to God. It is the same way. When you give blessing to someone and he say thank you, that fellow have opened a channel of continuous flow of such act from that source. When you don't say thank you, that source is closed, is cast now. It will never bring forth. You remember Jesus caused the fig tree and say you will not bring forth fruit anymore. So for your life to be on the progressive path and for the blessing of God in your life to be preserved, then the force of gratitude become a must for you. In closing, you will see the same when Jesus meant 10 lepers. He healed them all, 10 of them. Healing came true for them. But the Bible tells us, if you read that account from verse 11, the Bible says, only one return. Only one return and glorify God. 
and that she was a, Sam uh, a Samaritan. Praise the Lord. Only one returned to give glory to God. Only one. Only one, one person. You see the ratio? And that is how it has been. Many people are ungrateful in life. Many people are ungrateful in life. Many are ungrateful in life. And that is why their blessing is never advancing. Their blessing is never on the promotion ladder. Their blessing is never preserved because they are ungrateful. Mm. I read for you in Luke chapter 17 from verse 11. Luke 17, 11. He said it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain lane, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice or voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, may you be one of such people that we do the right thing, that we engage the right forces. And one of them, which when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorifying God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Look at what happened. And Jesus answered, said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? I am not true with them. There is, still a, there is still a level of restoration and recovery that is packaged for them. It is thanksgiving that makes you to be on the continuous rising in life. Continuous rising in life. And that is what makes life sweet. And that is how God designed life for believers. He said the path of adjustment is as a shining light, shining brighter and brighter. He said, I will not give you the city in one day. I will give you little by little. Your appreciation of one little takes you to another level of what God called little until you become very great and exceedingly great. Were there not ten clans? But where are the nine? I am not true with them. They cut short their blessing. You will no longer cut short of your blessing. It may not be, listen to me, it may not be as big as you want. It may be little to what you are looking for. But listen to this. It may not be exactly what you are looking for in volume, but it has brought you closer to what you are looking for. You are looking for 50,000? Somebody gave you 5,000. Now you are looking for 45. He has reduced your needs. He has met part of it. He has reduced your anxiety. Because God has so much for his children. But he proved you with little. And your attitude on little constantly determine whether you ever see the much that you are looking for. And verse 18, he said, they are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, well, life is never in truth a democracy because God is never crazy. Life is all about doing the right thing. Since you are the only one that do the right thing, even though you are one, we have to proceed in blessing. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And when, and that was it, he went from being healed to wholeness. What is the bridge between where you are and what God holds for your future? It's your gratitude. It's your gratitude. It's your gratitude. I know how we show gratitude to God. We show gratitude to God by showing 
our appreciation. It could be in a dance. It could be in testimony. It could be in rejoicing. It could be in helping those who are in that state where God has delivered you from. There are several ways to show gratitude. As you leave this hour, I commend you to God and to the world that I've shared with you today that at no time in your life will you live a retrogressive life. Your life shall be on a continuous rising because we keep on engaging the key that commit God never to get tired of you. As you engage the force of gratitude, God will keep on remember you for good. People will keep on remembering you for good. I tell people, once in a while, write letter to your boss. Just appreciate him. Now, the fact that you are appreciating does not mean there were no the things went wrong. But you were not there for things that are wrong. You were there for the things that are right. So keep on giving thanks. Sir, I just want to thank God for you since you arrived. I have seen some tremendous change in this office. This office have enjoyed peace. This office working under you is a privilege. I want to thank you. You see, when there is a position ahead, the boss will remember you. But you are ever criticizing him. There is nothing he has done right since he came. That is why he never, his eyes never see anything that is right for you. Change your attitude. I tell people at the end of the month, just buy little chocolate, give your boss. You are not bribing. You are just showing gratitude. You see, this woman was not bribing Jesus. This fellow was not bribing Jesus when he returned. Until you return, it is not your turn again. Until you return, it is not your turn again. Until you return to show gratitude to God for what he has done for you in form of offering, in form of jubilation, in form of excitement. God doesn't need the money, but he needs the character. As you go this hour, the Lord bless you, the Lord prosper you. I, I was looking at the Bible. When God says you should tithe, do you know God doesn't need your money? Our tithing is not giving money. He's not giving, he's not giving God money. Is keeping the memory, a remembrance in his heart. You see what he said? He said, bring you all the tithe and prove me now if I will not. So he's not asking you, God has everything. God has everything. And for example, see the day you have not been given, which part of God's kingdom has collapsed? Have you heard that, oh, the heaven in Malindi or the heaven in the city you are has collapsed because you didn't tithe? No is to teach you money management, is to check your character, is to check what kind of person you are before he left you. As you go this morning, may the Lord be with you. I see you powering your life on a new pedestal, on a new face with all these forces. You will not be stranded anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and prosper you. If you are there this morning, you are not born again. God has given you life. Why don't you give back this life to him? By receiving Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And live the rest of your life making your life pleasant for God. You are there. You want to pray that prayer this morning. You want to say, Jesus, I'm turning back to you. I'm coming back to give glory to you by giving you my life. By doing your will and inviting you into my life as my Lord and my personal Savior, I would like to pray with you. Shall we pray right now? Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner, but today I've heard your word. And today I'm inviting you to come into my life. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. I believe in my heart that you die and you rose from the grave for the atonements of my sin. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Satan, whatever activity you have, I'm no longer part of it. I am now born again. And Jesus is my Lord. Amen. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Wherever you are, I want you to look for a Bible-believing church and begin to go to church. And if you are in around my vicinity or around where any of our ministry or churches is, all that is displayed display on your skin 
uh, your screen now is to enable you to locate any of our churches and be part of us. And we will see you growing as we continue to give glory to the name of the Lord who have saved you today. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord grant you the desire of your heart. May you become a living testimony in Jesus' precious name. And for the rest of us, what an opportunity to give thanks to God this morning by way of giving our offering. Always remember to offer thanksgiving with your offering. God has done so much. He has woken you up today without any anxiety. There was no need for ambulance to come out of your house. There was no emergency among your children. Don't you think it will be a wisest thing by giving an offering to promote God's kingdom and to express your appreciation of God's goodness over your life. And as you do that this morning, I will bless your offering. And God that multiplied the seed that is sown, that God will receive your offering this morning and in turn, like he did to that, that man, when he received his appreciation, he advanced. God never give back to you what you give to him in the same volume. These are kingdom economy principles. Engage it this morning in Jesus' precious name. Father, receive their offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. And in return, bless your people. As they come with what they have, O oh Lord, turn it to what they desire. As they come with what they have, Lord, multiply it back to them. Thank you, Father. God is not mock. Whatever a man sow, that is what he will reap. Lord, let them reap this harvest of the seed they are sowing right now. In Jesus' precious name. God bless you. Thank you for always being there, supporting the ministry and making progress in our life. That is our desire and that is our excitement. Your success is our success. God bless you as you join us today. We have two power pack services today. We have uh, the evening service, prayer, time of prayer and intercession, and also at 10 p.m. to 12 a.m., we have Kesha today. Join us. Make sure you are praying because God is set to empower you to end this year successfully. Be blessed. Till I come your way, see you on top. In Jesus' precious name, amen.